What's up you guys? It's Charlie and this is the worst video for me to be filming right now because I'm talking about natural hair and my hair looks trash. I just threw it up. I just got out of the um like I just washed it and blow dried it so it's like I don't know why I didn't leave it curly for this video but you guys requested this video so many times so I figured I'd go ahead and make it. So let's get into the video. Okay, the first thing I wanna do in this video is give you tips on how to maintain your natural hair at Air Force basic training. And then I'm going to run through the AFI real quick to teach you or tell you a couple of things that you can find on the internet, but I'm just gonna pull it up for y'all so you don't have to waste your time looking for it. And the last thing I'm gonna do is give you some styles that I would suggest for Air Force basic military training. I also mentioned a couple styles that I would suggest in this video right here. So after you get done watching this video, go watch that video and you'll get more ideas. So let's get into it. The number one tip, and this isn't just about Air Force basic military training, this is just in general with natural hair, keep your hair moisturized. Everyone knows this is the number one tip, especially in Texas, it's really humid, but it's like, it's just really dry. The weather there is really, really unpredictable. Um, you don't obviously have enough time like you would on a normal day to do your hair like you normally would. So when you can, just make sure that you're keeping it moisturized. That is the number one tip. Another tip that I give about most things on this channel is all your hair care, self care, anything like that, I always recommend you do it on Sunday because Sunday is the time that you have mostly for yourself because no MTIs are there on Sunday and you get to take longer showers and really it's like your only day where you can really focus on things like this. So wash your hair on Sundays, style your hair on Sundays. Sunday is gonna be your best friend. Sunday is the best, Sundays are the best days of the week, especially for this type of thing. Just like at home, make sure that you're tying your hair down at night, wrap it if that's what you do, throw a bonnet on. Um, the pillows at BMT, one, they're dusty. They're dusty. Um, there's a dust cover on the bed all day, which is meant to cover the dust, but when you're actually making the beds, the dust somehow gets on the pillow, even though it's meant to protect the pillow. So I would just say, make sure, just like always, to wear a bonnet or a do-rag or a headscarf, anything, just make sure you're sleeping in that satin cap or whatever, just like you should be doing at home, because that'll obviously protect your edges, protect your hair, prevent breakage, all that good stuff. That is what you want. If you don't remember to bring a satin cap or a do-rag or a bonnet or anything like that with you, they do sell them at the BX. If you don't think they're gonna sell your favorite brand at the BX, even though they do have the more common brands, the ones that I know they have, I'll put on the screen somewhere, but make sure you bring your favorite brand with you in that case. <laughs> but remember that you have to get on a plane more than likely, so make sure it's under eight ounces, three ounces. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've, since I've been on a plane, I guess. Make sure that it's the size that is required to be on a plane. Don't let them throw away your hair products because I know they can get expensive, especially when you have natural hair. But if you do use like Cantu, and I think Shea Moisture has it too, they do have little travel size items now, and especially like in the little gift sets. So if you Google for travel size items and you don't find anything, make sure you look for the gift sets too because they always have the really small ones in there. Do not forget edge control. If you think you need edge control, ooh, and an edge control brush or toothbrush, make sure you bring that too, because I know that even though I did bring my edge control, I forgot to bring like an edge control toothbrush, or I forgot to bring a little brush to go with it, because I just brought my big brush. And I don't know why, because I went with braids, but um, yeah. Make sure you bring something to actually focus on your edges with. You won't get in trouble if you have um, like your baby hairs laid and slayed if you want to do all that. I would probably just slick them back because mine clearly aren't really done right now. Like I said, I just blow dried my hair, just threw it up so I can film this video real quick. So my hair looks a mess, but normally it looks a tad bit better than this. At BMT it was probably a hot mess, but I did what I could. Another thing, someone in your flight will more than likely be able to braid. We had a lot of braiders in our flight. We had, well, I say that, but you know, us um, WOCs, everybody can't braid our hair. <laughs> but we definitely had two or three girls in my flight who could braid hair and they did it really, really well. If you can't braid hair, someone there will be able to make it work for you. Something that I noticed a lot of people did when I was there, um, no matter what their color or hair texture or hair type was, um, they did their hair the night before. I did that, but I will still, of course, have to touch it up in the morning um, because my hair is just a beast of its own. And I think that's all the 
main tips that I have for natural hair at BMT. If I end up thinking up some more, I will put them in the top comment. Okay, y'all, now I'm gonna give y'all some of the regulations on hair at BMT and in the Air Force. I do know that sometimes at BMT, they're not as up to date on the AFIs. Not saying that they don't keep up to date with it because it's Air Force wide, they have to listen to the AFIs. When I was there, the rule was you had to have like black hair ties if my hair is black. It's not like that anymore. Like if you're blonde, you can also wear a black hair tie. They didn't know that at the time, but it had just passed. So sometimes, you know, things get messed up. You don't quite know the rules and they just have to print a new rule book because like things are changing and the Air Force is very, very slow to catch up with change. So yeah, especially at BMT. So the regulations on buns and ponytails. Your hair is allowed in a bun as long as your bun is not wider than the width of your head. So as long as it's not like way out here, you can have a bun. So like when you're getting box braids, you make sure your bun is more compact, not too bulky out on the sides. Okay, this one I'm gonna read straight off the AFI because it is kind of long and I don't wanna tell y'all the wrong thing. All locks, braids, and twists when worn will be of uniform dimension, no wider than one inch with natural spacing in between. Also, speaking of the spacing, obviously no designs, no little zigzags, no little curly cues, nothing too fancy, just straight to the back or diagonal, like straight lines. Don't do anything extra. Da-da-da, where was I? Oh, must present a neat, professional, and well-groomed appearance. When worn in multiple locks or braids or twists, shall be uniform in dimension. I feel like I just said that though. Small in diameter, approximately one fourth inch. Show no more than one fourth inch of scalp between the locks, braids, or twists, which just means like your part can't be too big. I don't see why, how you can make your part bigger. A lock or braid must continue to the end of hair without design or following the contour of the head. So that just means if it starts as a braid, it has to end as a braid, but there is an exception to this. Micro braids and twists are not required to last until the end. So obviously, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you know what micro braids are. So that's just like a good amendment they put in because I remember it wasn't in place for a while where all your braids had to go all the way to the end, but now you can wear micros and your hair, your braid doesn't have to go all the way to the end. It can obviously like stop right here and you have like free flowing hair and you just put it up like a regular bun, make sure it's not too big and you're good to go. As long as it's not like longer than your collar when you're in uniform, you can wear them. If it's longer than your collar, just put it up in a good bun. Also, when you're practicing your bun and when you're getting your hair braided, like some people like it braided into a bun, like automatically, so you don't have to put it up in the morning. Picture here. Um, I would make sure you tell the person doing your hair that it's gonna have to be a pretty low bun. Like don't make, make sure she doesn't put it like right here in the back of your head cause you're gonna have to wear your cover. And also the covers at BMT are like, they're not really sized well. So it could be like big. So I don't want your bun to be getting like all messed up back there. Unauthorized styles includes mohawks and etch designs. So if you have any like etches, any parts, like that are like razor bladed in, any designs like fade type situations, you're not allowed to have those. Okay, I know I was just talking about braids and micros and everything, but I did want to put this part in here too because it's very important. Braids, twists, micro braids, French braids, Dutch braids, and cornrows are authorized. You obviously know what a braid is, but I'm gonna read this anyways. A braid or twist is two or more portions of interwoven hair. If adding additional hair, it must be natural looking color similar to the individual's hair color. It must be conservative and not extreme and not present too fattish in appearance. Um, hair must not, uh, yeah. That's all that's really important about that. So basically it's just saying add the same color hair. Like if you have a color two in braid hair, get a color two in braid hair. Don't put no blonde hair in there doing a little too much, you know, yeah. So shaved heads are also unauthorized for females. Hair color, low lights, highlights, and frosting will not be faddish or extreme and will be natural looking color similar to the hair of the individual color. That's boring, I'm not gonna talk about that. This way you don't throw things. Black hair accessories can be worn no matter what color hair you have. That's new, cause that was not the case when I went through BMT. Hair will not contain an excessive amount of grooming aid. So like mousse or like eco styler gel or like, um, one thing I knew about when I saw some girls who were wearing wigs or like wearing like a frontal, they had like a lot of caked up, um, like probably like got to be glued gel. And it was just like sitting there 
and I'm pretty sure they should have gotten in trouble for that because it says right here that that's considered excessive amount of grooming aids so you don't want that okay this one I talked about in my black girls guide to BMT video wigs hair piece and extensions I didn't read the AFI on this because I honestly didn't know there was one Wigs, hair pieces, and extensions are authorized to meet the same standard required for natural hair. Be of good quality, good quality, don't get your hair from Wish. Fit and fit properly and comply with safety, functionality, and professionalism. Wigs and extensions are still prohibited for males. Synthetic hair or other materials are not authorized when prohibited by safety and mission requirements. They are authorized during BMT. That just means like certain jobs like fire protection, they wouldn't suggest you wear a synthetic wig unless you want to go around looking like Michael Jackson that one time. Okay, I think that's all of the AFI stuff that I wanted to read. And now I'm going to get into a really important part of this video, the last part of this video, where I'm just going to list off all of these styles that I suggest you guys wear. So, obviously, if your hair is straight, like mine is right now, you can wear it in a bun just like anybody else. Um, if your hair isn't straight, you can still wear it in a bun as long as you can. Mainly, like, the bun, like, it's gonna do what it wants to do. But, like, as long as you slick it back, you can wear it in a bun. What I did, cornrows or feed-in braids, I did those for the first three or four weeks I was there. I know some people who stayed in longer than mine. I just didn't like the way mine were looking because my hair grows fast and it's curly and it was starting to stick out between the little braids. It was looking hot. You can wear a wig. Some people have been giving me good advice and saying that they wore a wig and I should probably recommend it to y'all. I wouldn't do it, but you can. If you do hair, I would suggest doing that. I'm not that great at doing hair. I'm not that good at maintaining a wig. I am very last minute, so I'd probably be throwing it on right before PT. I wouldn't do it, but you can definitely do it because I've seen plenty of people who came back and said they wore a wig and it worked out fine, and that's great for them. Now, you can wear sew-in. Now, I suggest if you have real natural hair, like natural, natural hair, like how my hair looks in the morning when I don't put some heat on it, that you do not wear a sew-in because there's nothing you're gonna be able to do with that leave out unless you just pack in all of that excess gel on it. And like I said, that's against the rules. But a sew-in with a closure or a frontal, if you can maintain it, I would suggest you do that. Like the AFI said, nothing too big. So I think they would count it as too big if like your frontal's like flapping in the front, you know? Like, I was about to say a Donald Trump joke, but um, <laughs> we're gonna save that for another time. Kinky twists. I personally have never worn kinky twists. I know they were a big deal like in 2008. I know some people still wear them and they look good. I've just never had them, but you can wear them. They are authorized. Two strand twists. Two strand twists and flat twists. Um, a lot of girls in my flight did them. I did, I did them a good amount of times too. I really just did it right before pictures or right before graduation because I wanted my curls to look really good. So I did the two strand twist and just took them down. One girl on my flight, Davis, was actually my roommate in tech school. She did two strand twists all the time and it looked really, really good on her. Micro braids. Like I mentioned earlier in this video when I was talking about the AFIs, you can definitely wear micro braids. They would obviously stay up the whole time, probably take you into tech school too. Micro braids, if you feel like sitting down waiting for them to get done, are very, very worth it. You can wear a braided bob. I used to love rocking my little braided. <laughs> I used to love rocking my little braided bob back in the day. You can definitely do this. People do this in the military a lot. But um, you know the little braided Lord Farquaad type situation. You can wear that as long as it's not past your collar. You can rock your puff. That's what I did. Most of BMT just rocked my puff after my braids came down. Sometimes I twist it up to make my curls be popping. You know, it's a nice slick back puff. Also during PT, um, I would just put my top, put my puff on the top of my head just like I'd wear it normally. Braids in a bun. Um, like I mentioned earlier, just um, if you want to get some braids and then they put the bun, like they braid it back into the bun where you don't have to ever take it down. It's just automatically in the bun. That's cool. Um, that's definitely allowed. Single ease twists. Now, I did not think about single ease twists. I think it's because when I was going through basic training, there was a bulk um, rule. I think I just thought that any other braids other than the cornrows or the um, feed ins would be too big. The single ease twists, like, I wish I would have thought of that because one, they're cute. And other than that, like, it's a nice protective style. Another thing, hair grows, like, if you take care of it, your hair is going to grow at BMT. Your hair is going to grow, your waist is going to get small. BMT. Like, 
I'm not gonna lie, I had a little glow up in BMT because I was skinny, I was fit, I was in shape. I don't let myself go now, clearly, but you know. Crochets, crochets can obviously go along with the Singalese twists um, if that's the type of crochets you want. The crochets are authorized. Dreadlocks. Dreadlocks are newly authorized in the Air Force, so if you have dreads, don't cut them off to go to BMT. I don't know why you'd want to do that anyways. Let your lovely locks grow and show and all those wonderful things. <laughs> that was so extra. Okay, anyways, you can wear dreadlocks. I would suggest it if you have them, obviously, wear dreadlocks. And the last thing, something that I'm really trying to wean myself off of is a really nice silk press. If you do not feel like dealing with your natural hair, if you do not want to rock the poof, because like I said, most of my BMT, I had braids or I had my hair slicked back into a poof in the back of my head or a like poofy bun. I'm going to show you some pictures of how I wear my hair in uniform now a lot. But yeah, a silk press would probably last you a long time. I don't think I sweat that much during BMT. I'm um, not gonna lie, I wasn't the best at PC. <laughs> but I didn't, I, I just don't sweat that much. If you're going in the dead of summer, I understand the silk press probably won't last as long as you want it to. But even as the silk press is like getting old, your hair is still more tame. So I would suggest a silk press if that's something that you are you feel comfortable doing. Cause I know a lot of natural people, they are against silk press cause it can ruin your curl pattern. But I can honestly say it's never ruined mine. But yeah, that's the video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope I gave you guys enough tips. If you have any more questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments or slide into my DMs on Instagram and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you guys so much. I love you all. I'm sure this video is gonna be filled with all my WOCs. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.